you may recall that we uh, talked about this stuff, aqua resin. Actually, you wouldn't have known it was this stuff until I told you, but this is aqua resin, and this is the project that Benji's been working on since last week. So, Benji? So, I just uh, did this the same way that we did last week. We, I put this into a mold. I brushed a, two coats of detail layer um, to get it a, a nice finish. I do have some cleanup work. I'm going to take the ears off, um, fill in some of the holes. The great thing with aqua resin and like plaster is it doesn't tend to delaminate. Um, so I can go in and add pieces to this uh, as I want and it's not going to come apart. Um, and uh, the other great thing about this is that it's probably about 50% lighter than a plaster life gas. So, um, it's not heavy at all. I can lift it with one hand, whereas the other casting of this that I have that's made out of plaster, I pretty much have to carry with two hands. So um, that's some of the advantages of aqua resin. It's really, really light, um, and it seems to be pretty sturdy as well. So um, I'm going to fix some of the other imperfections, and then it should be good to go. Very cool. Very so. cool. And how long did it take you to do this as opposed to the plaster version? Um, it took a little bit longer than plaster just because I did this in layers, and you're doing it in thinner layers. Um, so I did two layers of detail coat, and then I went in and did um, about three layers with uh, Aquavel in there. Okay. So. Okay. And that effect was that it was... Yeah, you know, using my language, stupid light. We like that. There you go. Very cool. Oh, very good. Okay, I'll take your head I'll and take go away. And I'll go. Okay. All right. All right. Now, next thing. If you'll recall again from last week, uh, I took a little piece of aqua resin and the veil, and I put it on a piece of foam. So uh, we're going to come back around to this to show that, uh, remind you, I should say that uh, you can use aqua resin over top of foam. And it works pretty good. Now, on to other stuff. We're going to talk about cutting hot, uh, foam. Your basic, this kind of stuff, right? Okay, some people might call this bead foam. Um, some of us might refer to it as EPS. We might call it styrofoam. Um, you could also get the same basic stuff in blue, in pink. Uh, even this stuff over here, which is the flexible version. Um, it too can be cut with a hot wire. So, we got all these different choices. Now, tool wise, uh, what we're going to talk about is the hot wire foam factory stuff. And this is not the pro kit, this is the, uh, eh, we'll call it the consumer grade of material. I've got three different tools here. Um, this one would be for detail work if you want to like write. Okay. We could use this one for cutting. And then if we want to come up with some odd shape, we've got this one. Can you see that? See how it's a hoop? Well, I certainly don't want to touch it right now because it's a little warm. But if I uh, let it cool off, I could change that shape into basically whatever it is that I want to change it into. And uh, so we could cut all kinds of interesting little detail with that. So those are the three tools that I've got lined up for us today. Um, I want to point out something that a long time ago, I forget how many years it was, Wes Campbell did this for us in a, in a demo about this time of year where he used basically these tools and created this headstone. Now Wes is a far more talented guy than I. Um, I could pretend like I could do this, but believe me, it would not be this. It would be uh, crap. So let's just let's call it for what it is. That's why I'm in sales. So okay. So anyway, that's an example of something really cool that you can do with the foam. Um, we could certainly talk about what he did with the uh, the skull, but the uh, the basic premise here is that look at the neat stuff you can do with really cheap things that you can buy at the hardware store or Kmart. So now, more recently around here, we've had need for arrows. So Benji and the gang started producing arrows. And again, same old thing. Started off with white foam. See? White foam. White foam. Cut it out. In this case, they spent a whole bunch of time um, doing something that looked like wood grain. Uh, in this case, they're just having a good time. And here is a practical sign. See it? Enter and come in. 
So we've got three examples of things that we've done around here, just kind of dorking around with these basic tools. Um, again, go back to the tombstone. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you was a little story that you know, Ian over here, who you can't see because he's hiding behind the camera, he told me about a film festival that I guess comes up in October where uh, you're basically given what it is to, you have to work with on like Friday. And you gotta produce this whole thing, uh, a short, and I don't know how long that is, but we'll assume five minutes-ish. You gotta produce the whole thing in what, a week? Is that about right? Oh no. 48 hours. 48 hours, okay. So no week here. Two days, right? And that includes props, that includes scripting, that includes the whole schmear. And of course, then you gotta shoot the thing and edit it. So the last thing in the world you got time to do is to sit around and go find a piece and then make a mold off of it because after all, you're gonna bludgeon somebody with it so you can't use the real thing. That would probably not be a good idea. So you gotta make a fake, okay? Nobody's got time for that in 48 hours. So we got options here. We got options. It's called foam. Foam and your artistic ability. All right. I have no artistic ability, so I drew this, okay? It ain't pretty. It's gonna get the point across. So, what we're gonna do first off, we're gonna see if we cannot cut it out. This particular tool, you gotta be real careful with because the wire is very fine, okay? This is not working so good. All right, this is what happens when things don't work right. Very interesting. All right. I know this one works. So we're going to cheat. There we go. Much better. You're missing out on a wonderful smell. It's not bad, really. Okay, so there's a uh, first pass. Now, because of the limitation here, I'm gonna see if I can't do it at least partly from the back. Hope you can see that. Hey, it's working, what do you know? Remember what I said about me being in sales? It's all true. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Coming through, coming through. Oh, lost it, where'd it go? It's there somewhere. This is where we just make it up. And I'll clean it up afterwards. All right, gets the point across. All right, now. See how easy this is? Boom. So that's what it looks like, strings and all. Now, we want to do some other funky little things with it. Same tool. Again, remember, the other one was supposed to work and it didn't. Oh well, we move on. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take this edge off. I'm not going to do the whole thing. Otherwise, again, like last week, I don't want to waste your lunch hour or your lunch 30 minutes. Okay. And then if we want to do a little detail in here, give it some aging. Right. Make it look like somebody threw a rock at this thing and scored. Right. Okay. Letters and such. Same drill.
okay? I can recess that if I worked at it. If I use this other cutter and if I'd had it shaped differently, I could probably shape it to dig in and take out letters. But let's try this one. Let's see how this works. Oh, there we go. How's that? Ain't that cool? I sure hope you can see this. It's kind of fun. All right, so, got that going on. I can, let's see if I can't bend this thing a little bit by itself. Yeah, that'll do. See, crazy effects even if it is random. Now, what I'm depending upon is that you folks out there, you know, the ones with artistic ability as opposed to me, are looking at this going, huh, very interesting. I think I can do something with that, because after all, that is the purpose. All right, little circle. All right. I'm gonna do a quick outline of this thing here. I mean, how many people do you know with flowers on their tombstones? Well, not me, but I can draw a flower. That's why you got a flower. Some would argue that I can't draw a flower. Argue all you want. I don't care. All right. Speed sculpt. Get the P, and we're going to try something a little different. All right, I did all that, did that. A little funky detail up in here. We'll give it a line. Give it a line. All right, so cheesy as it may be, there it is, see? Now imagine, if you will, that you actually knew what you were doing, and that's what you got. Only a bigger scale, right? Now, you can glue this stuff together. Um, hot wire foam factory has some glue, but you can also use some spray adhesive. You have to be kind of careful, because uh, one thing you will hopefully know before you make the mistake is that if you put solvents on this kind of foam, you're going to melt it, period. End of subject. It's just going to go away. So you have to be a little choosy about what you use. So don't just throw any spray adhesive on this. Make sure it's a spray adhesive that's designed for foam. You can also use epoxy. That's no problem. You can also coat it with urethane, which, by the way, is what I'm about to do. So, here we go. Yeah. Nelson blows stuff up. Okay, this is uh, Smoothcast 300, nothing special. Same old stuff. But I, I have already put some black color in which side? That would be the B side. Very good. You people are so smart. Okay. Now, so it is officially mixed together, and the time bomb, I mean the clock, is ticking. Oh, let's not forget to mention Smooth On. Yeah, we love these guys. Thank you. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Trey. You guys rock. I love you, man. Okay. Oh, lovely smoke. Okay. Ever so quick, I'm going to double mix. Now, brush, goo. And let's just see what happens, will we? The big question is, is, I'm, is Nelson going to get this on his clothes? Probably. By the way, can you wash this stuff out? No. So let's just hope Nelson doesn't get it on his clothes. Because after all, you don't always have these kind of shirts at the thrift store. Oops. 
Well, you know, when you get them dirty, you need to shop at the thrift store, right? Okay, so give me some breaks here. All right, um, you're getting the basic idea. And those of you who have worked with Smoothcast 300 know that in a mass, like in a cup, it's gonna kick quicker than in the thin film, like on this piece of <coughs> art, he said lovingly. So at some point here, sooner in the cup than later on the piece, this stuff's going to kick. So if you want a thrill, watch the cup. Well, you get the idea. OK, it's starting to thicken up a little bit, I can tell. Even though Smoothcast 300 is technically not what is known as a gel cure, it is a snap cure, you can still kind of get a sense for what's going to happen and when. But what is nice, oops, I think I see it going. Yeah, it's starting to turn. All right. It is definitely starting to thicken up. See it's starting to drag. There we go, look in the cup. Ooh, it's so exciting. Yeah, that's what it does. Now, you notice the change color? I know that's not what the topic is here, but that's because, remember, Smooth On, Smooth Cast 300 turns white. So that's why it became gray. All right, you get the point. There we go. All right, so in the course of however many minutes we've been on, I've cut this thing out, made it look absolutely ridiculous, which is my job, of course, and then I've coated it with some stuff to make it look eh, different ridiculous. So that's that. This is just the beginning, all right? Uh, the cool thing about these tools is that just about anybody can use these things as long as you're not one of those people that will burn yourself with a curling iron, okay? Um, but anybody can do this stuff. It's not complicated. We didn't have to rewire the house, okay? Clearly, we need to get rid of this one, but that's probably the power supply. Um, there were two power supplies over here. One of them worked, the other one didn't. And of course, it is what it is. So we got two, and we were able to demonstrate what you could do even with just the one tool cutting through a piece of foam that was actually pretty thick. What is it? An inch, whatever, inch and change. Okay, I mentioned this earlier. That's aqua resin. The difference between this stuff and this stuff is that this is a harder surface. Okay, it's got a little bit of glass in there, so that's important to know. This is gonna weather a little bit better than this, although this stuff you can make weather if you clear coat it. Pretty straightforward. Get yourself a can of Krylon, uh, the, not Krylon, that's makeup. Krylon Crystal Clear, um, either in the glossy or the matte. One coat of that stuff on there, and you've got a weatherable surface. It's really that simple. Is it breakable? It's still foam, but it's a little bit tougher than it was before. Can you coat it with something soft? Absolutely, okay? We could coat this stuff with a flexible urethane. Um, you wouldn't coat it with a silicone because the silicone is basically just gonna fall off. But if you need to make a prop that you're going to actually hit somebody with, you can do that. You can put a flexible surface on there to where the impact isn't gonna cause any problem. Okay. The only thing you got to be careful of is that it's still foam, it's not the strongest stuff in the world, so therefore there is that possibility that if you hit them too hard, it's going to break. It is what it is. But remember the 48 hours. You hit them according to how much time you have. Okay. If you've only got 48 hours to build a prop and it's got to be something you actually strike somebody with and you don't happen to have CGI mastered, you got foam. So remember, you can take a whole bunch of this stuff. You can glue it together, right? Where do you buy this? Just about any old place. You can get it in a craft store. You can get it in Home Depot. You can get it in Lowe's. Um, if you're not sure where to look, you go look in the building insulation section. Sometimes they'll sell this in two foot by four foot panels. It's very easy to get, okay? Not a problem. All right, 
Um, I really can't think of a whole much more stuff to say. I do want to thank everybody who showed up over the weekend. We had an amazing turnout for the Cryland Grand Opening. Um, yeah, that was really spectacular. So we're thankful for that. Um, I do need to remind you that this Saturday is the workshop. It's all about epoxy. We call it the epoxy tutorial, where I will show you everything from straight laminating epoxy to how the surface coats work. And then ultimately, we're going to take some time to fool around with smooth-ons, what they call freeform. Okay? And that's the epoxy putty or sculpting dough. And there are several versions of that, one of which is flame retardant. You can do some really amazing things with this stuff. So we're going to play with it, and actually everybody uh, who attends the workshop is also going to be able to get their hands in it as well. So that's this week, the f and it's 10 o'clock. Everything we do, we try to start at 10 o'clock on Saturday. The following Saturday, which I think is the 26th, I think, we're going to do uh, uh, the thermoplastics workshop. Okay, that's all about Wonderflex. It's all about Warbla. It's all about friendly plastic. It's all about Foss shape and all these things that you can heat and change the shape of with heat. Benji's taught this a couple times before. We're wonder. We're really glad to have him do it again. So we've got that coming up. We have also rescheduled the basic mold making workshop. It is now going to be the first Saturday in October. And a couple of weeks after that, I forget the date, there's the two-part molds. Um, other news, uh, Cynthia from Cynthia Online has graciously agreed to do a airbrush class here. Um, it looks like it's gonna be the third weekend in October, but that's not in stone yet. So we'll keep you posted about it. And I think that's about it. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. If I have, oh well, we do what we can. All right, that's it. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next week.